Welcome to Real Reviews. I'm your host, James Caddick. I'm Corey Drummond. And today, we are talking about Star Wars Rogue One. Oh, did that happen? A Star Wars story. Oh, that did happen. Within the Star Wars universe. Oh, no. With characters from Star Wars. Oh, boy. A oh. film that, <clears throat> as of late, has gotten glowing reviews. I'd say even matching that of Force Awakens. Lots of people love it. So, Corey, let's talk about why this movie is absolute shit. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, about halfway through, I think the moment I thought about this was when they were getting onto the, the palm tree planet. <clears throat> My thought was, because this was a late show, and this was midnight release, I think. It was like the first night it came out. Pretty late, yeah. Um, I remember thinking, like, I wanted to fall asleep, and I haven't done that in a movie, like, ever. One thing I'm starting to realize with these movies, and it, and it sucks because this is the same studio that does the Marvel movies who have found a formula that works with their films. And they went totally outside of this and immediate tampering already. Like we're noticing it with Apocalypse, we're noticing it with Suicide Squad, uh, Batman v Superman, all these movies, it, it's like it's happening every movie now. Where with Rogue One, again, a visionary director, Gareth Edwards, we're gonna have this visionary director that wants to do this, this standalone, let's fuck it up. <laughs> and it's, and it came in the form of putting a different writer in, in the, just right in the middle of, of production. And, and then afterwards, after Gareth is finished, the ultimate FU, where we put in a totally different director to do reshoots. One of the biggest issues is they're trying to create a Star Wars film. Like this is, you know, the war elements don't really come into play until like the very, very end. Yeah. When there's an actual big battle happening. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a Star Wars film. It's a group of people with different opinions and views or personalities of love personalities right whatever yeah thrown into this situation where they have to go do a thing and you know but it doesn't have the hallmarks it doesn't have the, the character personalities it doesn't no. have them being interesting or compelling they don't interact with each other in any interesting way most of them don't interact at all Jin talks to uh, the blind guy Chirrut um, once whenever he recognizes her, her lightsaber crystal yeah. thing. I forgot what it's called and and then at the uh, later on, he saves her from the stormtroopers. And they never, oh yeah. And as far as we know, they don't talk they to each other. They never directly address each other at all. No. the entire film. In fact, these characters, they just kind of tag along. Yeah. For whatever reason. And our main characters don't even like recognize, like they, no. whenever they get to the planet where Jin's father is, yeah. they literally tell them to screw off and just stay oh, on yeah, the ship. Yeah, We're gonna go do the thing. Mm -hmm. Like he goes first, and then she goes after him, and they're, and they're just there. They're just bored, so they're like, "Well, our, let's go do something." Our heroes, and then our they, squad of rogues. And then I think they shoot something down. If I remember correctly, they shoot like a Tie Fighter, and there's a cool shot where it explodes and the thing. Yeah. You going back to the hallmarks, you know, you don't have the characters, you don't have the interesting emotions, you don't have their investment. They all just kind of find each other. Yeah. Where you know. Going back to the original Star Wars, you know, they found a way to, to grab Han Solo, you know. Right. Um, they convinced him to save the princess, you know. Oh, how grateful will she be, you know. She'll give you money and stuff like that, you know. Um, and they don't have that aspect, but they have. They try to have the adventure aspect where they go to a thing and then they go to another thing. But uh, there's no stakes to it. It's just kind of them... But it's all emotionless. Wandering around, yeah. Well, one, of the thing I real, one of the things that I realized is... Um, when these supposedly dark gripping things happen uh our actors aren't they never react there's no emotion um one of the biggest things that i noticed it from is this this action this new action war film um throughout the course of the action you you can tell um i don't know if it was because the actors are focusing on choreographing or where they need to be for these scenes but they're not reacting. They're just blank faced when action is happening. There's no form of tint, like um, with A New Hope, you had the scene where um, Luke 
and Han and Chewie are invading the, the base, and they're in Stormtrooper armor. And you have the action sequence that ends up leading to the uh, trash compactor. Mm -hmm. And it's in the hallway. While they're shooting, they're like exchanging dialogue and interacting. And they're all acting as their characters. Like Leia is acting as the snarky one. Can't get out that way. Looks like you managed to cut off our only escape route. Maybe you'd like it back in your cell, your highness. And, and uh, portraying like frustration towards Han and and Han is being sarcastic. Hey, man, you, you have a plan for getting out? He's afraid. And Luke's and Luke, just kind of there. Luke is just like, would you both shut up? And we're like, <laughs> they're, they're actually reacting. And it, it, there's, that's not here. And I don't know if it was because there was less choreography in A New Hope and it was just them aiming blasters and kind of dodging. And this had more action-y stuff, but and they're not reacting. It's possible that may be a Gareth Edwards thing because going back to his first film, Monsters, you know, he's only mm -hmm. made, this is his third film. Yeah. Going back to Monsters, there's only two actors in the movie. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is like extras, essentially, that just kind of show up. And most of those extras are people that he hired while he was illegally in that country filming, that he just kind of said, hey, do you want to be in a movie? Why in the trees? They grow up and go to the river until the ocean. But the two main actors, uh, one played by Scoot McNary, Mm -hmm. who is a terrific actor who we've seen dozens of times. He was in Batman vs Superman. He was the handicapped guy yeah. who got his legs crushed. Um, and the other main character was actually his girlfriend at the time, now wife, I believe. So they had natural chemistry together. Yeah. Um, and plus Scoop Mary being a terrific actor. And the acting in that movie was phenomenal. Yeah. But that may have been just in part of the, char the, the actor's natural chemistry and just them being good. But then you cut to Godzilla in which the only good acting in the Brian movie Cranston. was Brian Cranston. That's because he had experience. You're lying. Because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. I'm right, aren't I? My wife died here. Who then, you know, is gone. Yeah. Um, but the rest of the acting was kind of stilted and emotionless. Cut to this film. Most of the acting is stilted and emotionless. Uh, Forrest Wicker, I think, gives probably the most uh, energetic performance. The world is coming undone. Imperial flags rain across the galaxy. One, one thing I want to bring up is, and it's so great because it's worse with a Star Wars film with, when things change, hmm. because there's so much marketing that goes into films like these, you can see the snowball just building and building of what it was originally going to be. Mm -hmm. um, teaser trailer. No footage in the teaser trailer is in this film. And what is, is completely altered and has different dialogue. Even the original trailer, no, like not no footage, but some of the footage, even in the original trailer, is not it's not there. It's it's ridiculous, like how how much tampering affects a film, and it, I think it's it, it makes me angrier than most films because it has that snowball effect, where so much other shit is affected by the tampering, and it's constantly in your face over and over again, like uh, uh, the ending sequence. Totally different with Crip, like, it, it, it and, is. and, and it, you can even tell in the storyline, like, they're going to get the data disc, and for some reason in the film, it's like, we have to get the data disc to take it to the top of the tower, because there, for some reason, they have this thing at the top of the tower that transmit it, transmits it wirelessly to go through the shield, and then up to them, where they'll put it on the data disc, and it's because the original sequence was them running the data disc back to their ship to get up to them and you can even you see it in the original trailer in it's the, in there the, in the original and, teaser you see them clearly yeah. holding the data just and trying Krennic to get it across the battlefield and chases yeah. them he chases them through the battlefield and it's added stuff with Krennic just sh stuff like that and and with the reshoots with the new director one of my favorite things is the, the it's one of the representatives from Disney yeah there's not going to be a lightsaber in our film Cut 
to Darth Vader with his fucking lightsaber. It, it's so annoying. Well, see, there's nothing I hate more than, like, things that are interesting or good, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, probably the best thing in Jurassic World is that final fight at the end where it's a T-Rex and a Velociraptor versus <laughs> the uh, the super albino T-Rex thing. It's schlock yeah. in the movie. And it's amazing, and oh, it's yeah. the best thing, but for a bad reason. Um, in this, the finale of the movie is incredible from you know an action standpoint, or at least mm. the, the aerial stuff is. Stuff on the ground stuff's kind of boring because it's just people shooting at each other and, and someone dies. Nothing happens, it's just pow pow, and a guy falls and like okay, Ugh, had old, a, old had western. Something. But the, <laughs> the aerial stuff, like all these crazy things are happening. Mm. Um, but you you cut to the, the very end where the plot has to kind of end, and you mentioned the Darth Vader thing, and that's cool, and it looks great, and it's really intense. Doesn't fit. But it doesn't fit the movie. Uh, once again, a puzzle piece. Up to that, that does point, not fit. it's a fan service thing. And yeah. This movie is fan service the fucking movie. Oh my god! Cameo, I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure film? if I'm allowed to swear here. Cameo the film. That was one of the really fun things about the film is that you start to sense that we're getting closer and closer to episode four and that you start to see those moments where, oh wait, I know that guy. Like, oh my God, I, that was- Rogue One, a cameo story? You know, some of the objections I've, I've heard about, uh, about this is, uh, makes references to the uh, Fred Astaire with the Dirt Devil. Nothing escapes the power of a Dirt Devil. Um, or Audrey Hepburn selling chocolate. But that's not what we've done here. Uh, I'd like to think that the role that we gave Tarkin in this this film is one that Peter Cushing would have been really very excited and happy to, to play. Well, that's the thing that I, I dislike the most about the movie. Like, you say whatever about the reshoots, about how they changed the ending, switched around scenes, or, or changed motivations in the scenes. Um, the thing I didn't like was how, how much they were forcing the Star Wars stuff. That you start to see those moments where Oh wait, I know that guy. Music and tones in this film literally change to announce cameos. Like a character that I can't remember from the prequel. They grabbed uh, him from the prequels. Jimmy Jimmy Smiths who played Bale. Bale or Bale. Yeah, that's right. They grabbed him from the prequels. And when that, he arrives, the music literally rises to announce him. And it's like it was like the, this film was supposed to be a thing where it's like, yeah, it's okay. You won't have to. This is standalone. You won't have to. No one's gonna know who that is. It was like the uh, the awkward moment in Star Trek Into Darkness when Khan reveals yeah. who he is. My name is Khan. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Um, and the C-3PO and the fucking the weird, uncanny valley Grand Moff Tarkin. And Leia. Grand Moff Uncanny Valley and Leia. Um, and the problem is this fan service stuff kind of... Like, there's the, the, the harmless stuff, which is the C-3PO and R2-D2. There's the pig face man and butt face man. Um, and then you have, like, you know... Like when the ship first gets on, a, you have in four, and it's doing the, the tracking thing. They do that twice yeah. to like remind you of Star Wars. Yeah. A lot of that took away from me because I think it hurt the story, particularly with Grand Moff Tarkin. Um, because it, it it hurts with Grand Moff Tarkin because in turn it hurts Krennic. Yeah, it made Krennic less. Compelling. Krennic is the worst seemingly advertised villain I've ever seen in a film because he literally just takes shit from other people. He takes shit from Darth Vader and he takes shit from Grand Moff Tarkin. Because, again, since this is fan service the film, it literally has to put these two characters on a pedestal, which, by the way, weren't even on this pedestal in the original. That's what I don't understand about these films. Because I, the fans put 
like just skyrocket these characters that originally had nothing to they like they had no standing that they have and what fans have depicted i'm sorry people i am so sorry darth vader was nothing he was nothing in the originals he was just a dude. He was muscle. He was what Wolverine was in the comics. Yeah. To the point that well, the Grand Admirals literally shit on him in the film. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the Force. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tape. He was he was cool and compelling and interesting as a character, but there's the thing that's the thing about being this you know multi billion dollar franchise. Yeah, is after decades, Star Wars is on a whole another level than yeah. most franchises. You know, and it's a great idea that Disney bought them, but at the same point, I mean. What are we going to get now, except for I know. more of what we used will to get? Will they ever? I, like, I just don't get, will they ever evolve? I, well, and, okay. and the question is... We got Star is, Wars Episode Eight. Yeah. It's going to be more of this. Yeah. We have Han mm -hmm. Solo. Yeah. It's going to be more of this. Yeah. Episode Nine, more of this. And then we're probably going to get um, uh, a Boba Fett movie and, or something. And the new characters that we get, they play it so safe that they cut all the stuff that made that person a character, blank slate them, so we can put more Star Wars in. That like I don't I don't think Star Wars Star Wars will be anything outside of the original trilogy ever, ever. At and, least and, not for ten years. And possibly. One thing about it that really painstakingly irks me is that this is what the fans want. Yeah. Seemingly, this is what the fans. This movie got amazing reviews. The fans love, they like seeing C-3PO in every movie. They like seeing a Han reference in every, they like seeing older movie reference in every fucking movie. These people, like, I don't think it'll ever evolve strictly because of the fans. I have never seen a fans that have, like, sh like, held the movies by a leash, a, such a tight leash, to where they enjoy this shit. Yeah. To, to kind of to kind of wrap everything up, um, you know, I, I kind of. It's so.